Is your favorite sandwich as old as the sands of time? Let's talk about that. Good Mythical Morning. Today we're getting into the history of some iconic sandwiches. And a portion of today's episode is sponsored by ShipStation, but more on that later. Now if you look up any old article about the history of sandwiches, it'll probably start with, the Earl of Sandwich this and 17th century that, but sandwiches go all the way back to first century BCE. That stands for better chill, Earl. Yeah, Earl, you thought you invented a sandwich just because you just so happen to have the same last name? Freaking Earl. You played yourself, Earl. Earl. Clearly, some of us are in need of a little history lesson in the form of a shuffleboard game. We're talking about you, Earl. It's time for Stuff and Shove Sandwich Edition. Welcome to the Stuff and Shove Zone. Uh-huh. Okay, uh-huh. gentlemen, you know how this works. Each round, you'll guess when a specific sandwich was created by shuffling your pucks to the correct decade on the mythical shuffleboard. Yep. The winner will get to eat the world's first six centimeter sub sandwich in Good well, Mythical Morning. International. Exciting. How about it? You can yeah. unclose, yeah, please. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Right. Oh, no. Right. Just a, a PB and J. Classic. Let's make sure, though. How does somebody register that they've invented a sandwich? First of all, that's what I want to know. Is, um, it, is there I, a patent office? Pre internet, I think it was. Almanac. You'd write into the almanac. Hmm. Today I invented a new sandwich. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Who goes first? Me. Because you won last time. It's just an amazing combination, you know? Children mm. don't lie. You think well, a child children invented lie. it? You think a child invented it? Children don't lie. <laughs> children, I think maybe children only lie. I like to redact my statement. But I don't think they invented it. Well, you gotta have three things to invent a PB and J sandwich, Link. Yep. Grit. Bread, <laughs> survival skills. Peanut butter. And jelly. I love for the outdoors. Bread's been around a long time. Peanut butter, since George Washington Carver. <laughs> uh, and jelly. <laughs> I don't know who invented jelly. Carver didn't invent it. Did he? Or did he? You know what? I think it's I know con- he did a lot of stuff with peanuts. Uh, okay, golly, man, this feels- Golly, like, he says. This feels like a 1940. All right, you, that was a pretty accurate little shift there. Um, I'm a little disappointed. There's no 1960 on the board. What, what are we gonna do with that information? Tuck that away for later. Is that what you wanted to say? Is that what you wanted it to be? That's what I wanted it to be. No, that would be way too early. So 1940. Way too early. <sighs> we don't even care anymore, really. It's earlier than 1940, man. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just so you know, just that. what we're all laughing at. What? When it, you, I said, did you want it to be 1960? You said, ah, oh, that would be way too early. That's what you said. Oh, that's what I said? Yeah. That's not, why did I even say that? I don't know. But we don't care anymore. We're just what we're saying. We're just letting you know why we're laughing. What are you going for? Um, I am going to knock you into 1990 and rule the board. So it doesn't matter. Careful My now. strategy. Careful now. Determination and love for the outdoors. Hold on. These are tall pucks. So I feel like we might need to talk about a, a rule that we've never had before. If your puck falls over, you, where it lands does not count. It has to be upright. No, that you just made that up. Yeah, well, you have a freaking scroll. Maybe we should add to it. I'm well, just saying, I, I if your puck is, is sideways, it's not saying anything. It's just saying, I don't care. Well, I uh, I might be open to if my puck is sideways. If your puck ends up sideways, Can let's, I speak? Let's, let's discuss the rules. That it be from the distance of the puck, not the tall sandwich on it. I don't know. We'll have to see. Let's just see what happens. But also, what, what's your... Guess, Link. That's not how I'm playing this round. My guess is every other one except 1990. Hey, kids don't lie. I don't know. Uh, who am I? Who am I kidding? I don't have a clue. Probably the 30s or 40s, is which which is why I'm right there in between, betwixt them. 
Oh, oh, no. oh, oh no. Whoa. Hold on. You, but listen. See, 19- I did what I wanted to do to you, but I didn't do whoa, what whoa, I wanted on. to do to me. 1910 is not a bad answer. You're in that. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, that's a good answer. 1910 was my answer, Stevie. Uh huh. While peanut butter was first introduced at the 1893 Chicago World Fair, the first recipe for the peanut butter and jelly sandwich appeared in the Boston Cooking School magazine of culinary science and domestic economics wow. in 1901. Oh, you're, so there you go, 1910, so, you're in no, it. No, that would be 1900. <laughs> Oh. I know those. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Okay. So we're going to have to measure. I'm closer, man. Without a doubt. I mean, do you really have to measure that to know that I'm closer? Yeah. Okay, all right, let's do it. Now, don't move it when you measure it. Don't move it when you measure it. So this right here, from that to... Then I'm going to do this. And I'm closer. Rotate it to the right. So you can, yeah, there you go. There oh, you yeah. Go. Okay. There you go. All right. He's closer. But boy, boy, it was tight. Dang, it that was, was tight. awesome. There was a measurement. Woo wee. Dramama. <laughs> I tried to say drama and I said dramama. Whoa, <laughs> 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 dramama. <laughs> Do something cool. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Sandwich. Oh, my goodness. This is good. This is a patty melt. Woo. That's, oh, that's nice. It's a double, too. Mmm. Mmm. Pack that up. I'd like you to take that home. Man. You know what? If you find yourself at a Waffle House, might I suggest the patty melt? I've never had it from there. Mm -hmm. It's good, huh? A lot of people just get waffle because they're called a Waffle House. Get yourself a patty melt next time. Patty melt with a side of scramble. And a side of hash browns. Nice. Smothered, covered, and shoved. Speaking of shoved, where are you gonna shove this thing here? Well, you gotta have a diner before you can do a patty melt. You know 1960's not on this board. Nope. <laughs> you know what's also not in your puck? Tomatoes. Do you see how, do you see the attention to detail around I here? I noticed that, guys. Thanks for not doing that. Uh, is it the 50s or is it the 40s? I think it's the 40s. I'm going back for the 40s again. Okay, so this is uh, this could be a repeat of last time. My answer is officially 1950. Um, mm. I'm definitely feeling those diner vibes that you're talking about. Am I just gonna go for the gusto, or am I gonna try to do what I didn't do last time, which is get right next to you and push you into 90 again? That's what I'm gonna do. Second time's a charm. So your answer is 50s, but you're not gonna just land on it. Right, because I'm gonna box you out. That's better. You almost did the same thing. Yeah, I know. But that was better. I'm happy with that. Well, hopefully it's in the 1910s. The patty melt consists of ground beef, Swiss cheese, and caramelized onions griddled on rile, rile bread. <laughs> rile. Rile, rile them up. And it was first placed on a menu for the now defunct Tiny Nailers restaurant in Los Angeles during the 1950s. Yes, we were both right. Mm. My strategy paid off, <sighs> and we're tied up. Before we discover when in history this next sandwich hails from, okay. this portion of today's episode is sponsored by ShipStation, the leading order management and shipping software on the internet. If you sell things online, listen up. Yeah, it's a challenging time for small business owners, y'all. Uh, in a world where free and fast shipping is the norm, it can be hard for the little guy to keep up with the expectations set by the huge corporations that's where ShipStation comes in. ShipStation helps you lower shipping costs and make returns easy so you can keep your customers happy no matter the size of your business. Yeah, we make a lot of things here at Mythical, so we know how important it is to make the shipping process as smooth as possible. ShipStation makes it easy to grow your business by handling your orders from every platform in one place. And with the best discounts in the industry, you'll never have to worry about overpaying for shipping. ShipStation helps you get up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. 84%! 
percent. What? So if you've been dragging your feet on starting a free trial with ShipStation, it's time to pick those feet up and do it. Keep growing your business all year long with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com slash GMM and sign up for a free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com slash GMM. And thanks again to ShipStation for sponsoring this portion of today's episode. Thank you. Do something cool. Where, where, where? Where can we go? You know what's happening. Is that a Philly cheesesteak? It's a Philly cheesesteak. Sink it. Sink it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Straight out of Philly. Or is it? It is, Link. The tie is scored. And if I know my Philly history, the person or place who claims to be the inventor of the Philly steak sandwich, Philly cheesesteak sandwich, is Pat's in Philly. Home of the original. We've been there. We met him. We met like his son or grandson or something. <laughs> oh. Man, it could be as early as like 100 years ago. It could be the 20s. But I think it's the 40s and I keep saying 40s. And you wanna say 40s. You I keep think saying it. I think it's the 40s. Well, you're getting good at, no, you, now you're overshooting it. Well, daggum it. Every time you've gone for 40. I'm sorry, bad timing. <laughs> um, I mean, would it be boring if I just did the same thing mm -hmm. that I've done in the past two rounds? Because that's what you've done, and boy, it was boring. Well, I, I feel like I need to do something. If you want to do something less boring, win a round and get ahead of me. Ooh, ooh ho, ho, ho. I won the last round. Win another round. I feel like I just need to get snazzy with it. Like maybe a little bank shot. You're over there in 1990 in loser zone. What's your answer? Um, it's probably 1960 isn't on there. <laughs> okay, crap. Then I have to go with 40 or 70. 70 is too recent. That would be crazy. My answer is 1940. Okay. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're going to have to get the measuring tape out again. Fate has dictated that my answer is now 1970. I think I'm closer to 40, but I don't know if that's the right answer. In the 1930s, a South Philadelphia restaurant owner and hot dog vendor named Pat. Pat! Cooked chopped beef on Link, his hot Link dog cart's grill. <laughs> Scooping it. it into an Italian roll with onions, and it became quite popular. But the cheese and the iconic name were not added until the 1940s. Yeah. Okay. Now we got to measure. What? We got to measure. It was a it was a che Philly cheeseless steak. I'm closer, man. You can measure to learn that I'm closer, but based on my eyeball, I'm closer. Because I'm like this close, and you're like this close. Man, shoot. You're definitely okay. further away. All right, he takes the point. Oh, man. We met Pat, he was 160. <laughs> Do something cooler than I did. Chupa, chupa, chupa. I got 99 problems, but a sandwich ain't one. Okay, all right, that all was right. pretty cool. It what? was a little bit of a riff on what I did. Let's yeah, just be honest. It was cooler. Okay, all right, okay, it was a little cooler. What is this, a lobster roll? Yes, it is a lobster roll. Mm-hmm. Mm. Reminds me of your 40th birthday. Now I always think of that when I think of lobster rolls. Why, because I dress up like a lobster? Rhett had lobster rolls at his birthday party. I had a lobster roll truck at my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you were there. Yeah, the good, good rolls. What do you remember? Everybody about, was there. What do you remember about that, uh, that party? You know, mainly the lobster roll truck. Uh, yeah, that was all I remember. Good rolls there. Whenever I have a lobster roll, I always think of your 40th birthday party. You don't remember my performance of Brandy with the band? Uh, you know, at that point, I'd had so many lobster rolls. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, I blacked out. Right. <laughs> lobster rolls. Man. I mean, wow. <laughs> Gee whiz. Gee willikers. Golly. I mean, people have been eating lobster for a long time. I think it's really old. I think lobster rolls are so old, man. 30s. But they might be 1970, so I'm gonna try to go right in between them. 
Oh gosh! It went. Oh god! Stopped a little short. Maybe it's the 1900s. Maybe it's the 1900s. Um, I'm feeling like lobster in a sandwich is not something that happened until things got really decadent in the 80s. People wearing like big lapels and pleats, putting lobster in inside of bread. So, and I'm gonna do something a little fun because uh, I don't know. I just feel like I feel like I gotta goose this episode a little bit. I gotta goose it. So I'm gonna give it a little bank shot. Is that what you're normally thinking? Into the 80s. Okay, bank shot into the 80s. This is gonna be replay worthy, I think. <clears throat> Bless you. Oh, did you. Why did you point before you sneeze? Distraction. You want me to look over I don't over want anybody here? to watch me sneeze. What's your point now? You see, oh, what you, was that? People think, a bird! And they look at the bird, <laughs> and they don't know that you're sneezing. Goose it. Double bank shot. Can we get a replay on that? <laughs> <laughs> Double bank shot. That's pretty good. I, I mean, mean it, it hit two walls. Who knows, man? You might still be. You might. You're still closer to eighty. I don't know. That's all I care about. Nineteen eighty. Tell me, Stevie. Ask any lobster historian, and they'll likely tell you that the lobster roll was born at a restaurant called Perry's in Milford, Connecticut, after a customer asked owner Harry Perry to serve him lobster meat off the shell, dressed in butter, and placed in a bun. The new sandwich proved to be so popular that Perry mounted a large sign over his restaurant that read. Home of the Lobster Roll, back in 1927. Yeah, lucky me. 1927. 1927, man, it's old, bro. Were there any sandwiches invented in the 80s? <laughs> Maybe, we'll find out soon. Do something coolest. Look at that bird. Pretty cool, man. How, how did the sandwich get here? <laughs> So, know, peanut butter and marshmallow fluff. Ooh. It's called a fluffer nutter. Mm -hmm. Is that right? A fluffer nutter. Much as I love peanut butter, I'm not much of a marshmallow guy, so I don't know if I've had one of these. Um, they're not bad. That's good, though. Okay, Link. I prefer a peanut butter honey sandwich. As do I. You technically can't win according to the normal rules. We'll, we'll discuss how you can win when it's your turn. But I'm going first. Fluffer Nutter. I think, I think your moment might have come. The 80s? Yeah, the, the 80s might have come. One of the things I will preview the fact that when you go second in the final round, bumps are not allowed, which gives you a disadvantage. Right. If you do bump, According to the scroll, I get to put my puck where it was and move your puck to any eligible answer. Yep. So therefore, it would be in my best interest to put you in a situation where if you would like to get to the 80s, you would risk hitting me. And also, in order to get to the 80s, you're gonna have to bank off one of the surfaces. We'll talk about that in a second. So I'm gonna try to go to the 80s, but still be in the 70s. Because I think 70s and 80s are both good answers and 60s are not on the board. <laughs> Oh, that looks a little aggressive. He is squarely in 1910. Okay, Link. You have left the door open That was for a me. horrible, horrible showing, but it made it more dramatic. You mean dramamic? Dramamic. Here's the thing. In order to win, you have to guess the correct, you have to guess the correct one, and then you have to land, land completely squarely in, in it. it. But because, and we don't have this rule, but I think we should add the rule to the scroll. We tested these a little bit earlier and realized that they don't bounce off the back and then come beyond just one square. Yeah, they're too tall. They're not very bounceable. So we need to add something to the scroll that says something like, if thou has a puck, puck that is not conducive to bank a thing, right. um, thou can choose another wall be besides the back wall to bounce thine puck off of and still be circumscribed inside the right answer. Okay. So you can bounce off any wall but you have to call it and you have to be completely inside it. You cannot be touching any black. I agree to all that. What if it's 90s though? Because to make a fluffer nutter, you have to have spreadable marshmallow. Is that something that, that had to be invented first, like a whole tub of marshmallow goo. That might not have happened until the 90s. Wow. Interesting. 
I, I, I'm going to go for 90, and then I'm actually going to bank it off the back. That's what I was saying. Yeah, you, you'll be able to do that. Yes! 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 Okay. Please be 90s. Come on. Come on. This would be so good for me, Stevie. I, I'm just reading the facts here. Did you know? I need this today. Paul Revere's great, great, great granddaughter, Emma Curtis, made and marketed Snowflake brand marshmallow cream. And did you know? Great, 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 great. She had the idea to combine that marshmallow cream with peanut butter between two slices of bread and call it a Liberty Sandwich. And did you know it became quite popular as U.S. citizens were being urged to ration food due to the war? And did you know that all happened in 1918? What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the 80s, the 90s, during the war. 19. A so I was actually correct. Yeah. By accident. A fluffer nutter has been around since 1918. Good lord. Okay, Link, you lost. <laughs> Did I? I wasn't clear yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dang yeah. it. You lost badly. Dang it. Badly. But listen, I almost wanted you to win because that would have been so drama. Give the man his prize. Yeah. The first ever six centimeter sub. Look at this thing. It's taped up. It's nice. It's exactly six centimeters. And it has a tomato on it, so. Look at that bird. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what time it is. Hi, my name is Sarah from Wakanda, Illinois, and I just held a discussion about is a hot dog a sandwich? I vote yes. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. It's spreading. It's spreading to the youth. Yeah. Did she say Wakanda, Illinois? Wakanda, Illinois, we're we talking about here. <laughs> Click the top link to watch us guess which celebrity has a sandwich named after them in Good Mythical More. And to find out where the wheel's gonna land. You're a southern gal and you're drinking Pepsi. You know what's worse too is I have a Coke tattoo. <laughs> what's wrong? You should you need to Don't tell to... nobody! Okay! <laughs> Keep that to yourself! 